All right, this problem estimates the cost of equity capital for Walmart using the uh, dividend discount model or discounted cash flow. All right, so the discounted cash flow or dividend discount model, the cost of equity or the rate of return expected, uh, the required rate of return for investors would be the dividend one year from now, D1, divided by the price today plus the long-term growth rate of G. Okay, so what that's measuring is the total rate of return is two component pieces. The cash flow component, which is the cash flow over the next year divided by the price, plus the capital gains yield, which is the expected and anticipated long-run growth rate of the dividends. All right, if the dividends are growing by that rate, then the assumption is also that the price of the stock grows by the same rate. All right, so information we have here. I'm given D1, the dividend next year, so over the next 12 months, $2.20. The growth rate of the dividends is 9.5% which means that the dividend next year or the year the dividend 2 years from now will be 9.5% higher than 220 in 3 years it'll be 9.5% squared higher all right and then you have the price at time zero or today's price of $75 so to calculate the cost of equity capital that would be D1 divided by P0, that's your cash flow yield, and then add the capital gains yield, and the answer is about 12.4%. All right, so D1 over P0 plus G. Now, the dividend discount model has some key assumptions in it. One that you know what the dividends are and two that they grow at some constant rate now that's some pretty strong assumptions and it turns out with large companies though it's it, those are pretty easy assumptions to make and there's also some more complicated things we can do arithmetic wise to make the estimate the bottom line you have to have a long-term growth rate and you need to have a dividend pay in stock. So with companies that don't pay dividends, you have to use some other approach. Or if the dividends grow at a non-constant rate, you have to use a different approach. But this is fairly simple. For the large publicly traded corporations that do pay dividends, this is a fairly robust model because they do tend to pay a constant predictable dividend.